right, here we go again. We are live with Shelters by Jesus podcast, and we're excited as always. We're excited that you're watching. We're excited that you're subscribing. We're excited that you put the like on there because that helps us take care of the homeless. And if you want to know more about us, go to sheltersbyjesus.com, and you'll see that you can support us for $9 a month. You can get somebody off the street. That's pretty cool. And uh, we have four books all about this place called Shelters by Jesus, and uh, they're written by the dumb hit from Skowhegan. That would be me. And uh, if you would like those, put your name and address on here and, and say, I would like books one through four or all four or whatever. And there are two prices. They are $10 or they are free. Uh, the other thing you can do is call 207-474-8833 for the office. Tell the office worker, I would like Pastor Barry's books. And we'll see to it that they go out. Just give me your name and address and we'll take care of that. Also, if you want a tour, you still call the 207-474-8833 and ask for a tour. And we'd love to have you come here live for the tours. Come for a live service at 530 on Saturday night. We have live worship music followed by my message at 6 o'clock, which is streamed. So those are all our advertisements, and we're ready to go. Today, we got another special. We've been trying to do different things. And what we do is here we have a staff that helps us keep things running. And our staff is different than most staffs. They don't get paid. <laughs> they work for room and board. Uh, all of them came here as homeless and uh, have shown qualities that we love in them. And we go, boy, we'll put them on staff. And they all have their own thing. So we just want to introduce them to you. And then, uh, are these mics on? Yeah, is the green light on? Yes. OK, it's on. All right. We just want to introduce them to you, and uh, we'll talk about what they do uh, as uh, staff, because each one has a different thing. That's how we get everything done. So I'll start from my left to right, my left. So let's give us your name and what you do. Uh, my name is Ken, and I run the kitchen here at the, at the shelter. Okay. And uh, Ken puts on some unbelievable meals. And... Uh, before you come here, you used to be, a, you are a chef. You right. worked as a professional chef, right? I've worked a, as a professional chef, line cook, prep cook. I started it washing dishes, so worked my way up. Um, and I, I enjoy what I do, and working in the kitchen here just allows me to keep on with my my enjoyment. And I found that it, it's a ministry, and, and I'm enjoying it tremendously. That's awesome. And we appreciate what you do. Definitely, uh, we definitely need help in the kitchens, that's for sure. So we slide Marilyn into, we're going to get her, you, it's a little much to get all everybody in this picture. So my cameraman is working trying to get us all in. We got a bigger, <laughs> we normally don't have such a big group here. <laughs> so are we all in now, Seth? All right. Well, of course I'm good. I want to offer all in. <laughs> we know I'm good. I'm Pastor Barry because I'm good. All right. Uh, and some of them don't like to talk much, so you probably won't get much out of them. But we want to talk about the things that they do. Uh, the next one uh, is Peter. Pete, what do you do? I take care of all the laundry. Yeah. And uh, that is a full-time job. Yeah. And uh, it comes to you in a bag, right? Yeah, I'm laundry bag. Some don't. <laughs> so I'm just take it down and throw it in the pile. Okay. And so you wash it, you dry it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if it's a laundry bag, you put it back in the laundry bag. Yeah. All right. So and uh, so we have these laundry bags that are actually made on the premises now because we have a bunch of sores. So Pete uh, is responsible for seeing to it. All the clothes are clean. All the bedding is clean. It's all washed. It's dried and it's back. So that that's how uh, we get the job done. That's if you come here and you want to know how the laundry is done, that's how it's done. Now, he does the uh, men's side anyway. Yeah. Uh, we have somebody else that does the family side, which is the church side. So, Pete, huh? I know you're not overly talkative, and I know you probably hate even being in this podcast, but I would like, would you mind briefly just saying how you became homeless? Would you mind doing that? I was, I was living in me. I lost my job, my vehicle. Went. So 
but I had no income. And I was living with my father, and then we didn't get along. He told me one day there's uh, plenty of rope in the cellar and a lot of trees out back. Wow. So I took a hint and left. That's a hint. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I haven't heard, because I've never heard your story, so I, I didn't know. Yeah. So, wow. So you was with your dad before you came here. That's where yeah. you were. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, I probably would have decided it was time to go too if somebody said take a rope out to a big tree. I mean, that's wow. I don't even I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> Seriously, uh, man. I but I want you guys to know that are watching this. Pete does an unbelievable job. You've been doing this for quite a while for us. You know, over a year, I'd say at least. Almost two years. So we're so blessed with our staff, uh, residents. They don't get involved with staff. They look for, you know, they're moving along. We, we love it when our staff just sticks around. And some of them stick around quite a while because they care about this place. And they just stay here and help. And uh, I'm sure Pete could leave if he wanted to, but he sticks around anyway. Yep. Yep. And uh, we appreciate it. All right. Next in the line. Michelle. Michelle. Hi. You've been on my podcast before. Yes. And so... But we didn't talk about you being a staff member, so this is altogether different for this one. So uh, what do you do? Um, I lock the doors at night, make sure all the kiddos are safe and everybody's in. Um, and I just, as I look up to Marilyn a lot, I try to be somebody that other people can follow the rules. And um, I, I do the bathrooms. <laughs> and, and we appreciate that. Up. Bathrooms is a necessity, yeah. I will tell you that right now. With 23 kids here, not counting the parents, with one shower and um, four bathrooms. It's, it's yeah, it's a lot, but I can, um, I get to stay here and as long as I follow the rules and I, like everybody else, I definitely have my own issues, but I have people to go, go to and I have the Lord and I'm grateful for my staff position. And again, we're hearing these guys work. We got a, a cook, laundry, cleaning. They all do this for. They don't get any salaries at all. Uh, this is why we can do what a lot of shelters can't do because they have to hire people to come in and do all these things. And so they're limited on time that they can be there. They're limited on how long the folks can be there. You're paying them by the hour or a salary, whatever. But these folks are just working for room and board, so they're here twenty four seven. So we have that advantage and it is an advantage we're 100 percent faith-based so we depend on your nine dollars to run it and that nine dollars goes further because we're gonna have to pay these guys uh that is an unbelievable blessing of god all right and on my further end is Marilyn. Marilyn. it is that, that you are Marilyn. yes you look just like her uh <laughs> Marilyn. <laughs> Uh, is that mic close enough? Are we picking her up good enough? I, I can't tell. Okay, slide it over there a little bit. There you go. We'll move these a little bit, kind of divide them up a little bit. There we go, because I want to hear. Marilyn, tell them all. <laughs> uh, she is a do-it-all dolly around here. So you are staff, and what are the positions you take care of while you're here? Okay, uh, as a staff member, I do the supply room. Yep. I'm in charge of... Now, what is the supply room? I hear that. The, they may the, not know what okay, you do. The supply. When people... Because uh, different... In the morning, chores are assigned. And different people have different chores to do. So they need to come to get the cleaning supplies to do the chores. So that's in the supply room. And I divvy them out. Okay? Yep. So and you run the supply room. Yes, I do the laundry. For the... The family shelter. Yes, for the for the family shelter. Yes, yeah. not not Pete's side, but over here I do the laundry. Yes, and you do the same yes. thing. You, you the bags come. They they bring their laundry down basically, and I I clean it and send it back to them, and yeah. So it's washed and dried. Washed and dried and sent back to them to their rooms. Yep. Yes. And you have other jobs here. Uh, sometimes I cover the office for Seth. If he has to leave, I'm just learning how to do what Seth is doing now with the camera. Your new podcast, and, Camera and, Woman. And, and, I almost said Camera Man. You're not a man, and, so it's Camera man. Woman. And, and I love doing that. So you just... I, I love doing everything that I do. I do. Awesome. It's, 
I feel privileged to be able to do, give back. Okay. Seth, why don't you come around and talk about your staff now? Oh, oh, wait till I get in front of that camera. We're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tell about how important it is to have them and, and what, you know, the yeah. whole nine yards. Uh, Marilyn also teaches classes, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yes. I she's our so awesome so. sewing teacher. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Shelters by Jesus uh, is more than one man could ever handle. And uh, you did it for the first few years, Pastor. You didn't have anybody. Right. Well, and my you, numbers weren't 100 people either. <laughs> right. Um, so basically, uh, when I took over, I wanted to make staff uh, more accountable, but also in a position where they, they owned their arena. So like Ken is not just the kitchen guy. He's the kitchen manager. Right. right. And he is in charge of the laundry and the bedding and all that stuff and so staff gets to set up their area the way they want to they get to learn some leadership skills they get to learn people coping skills and and some management skills and um i cannot i, I can tell you right now uh, i cannot run this place without them we have maintenance guys that that i can't do what they do and they're saving us a ton of money because they can do the work themselves absolutely we can buy the parts or whatever we need cheaply, and they can go in with their skills and, and save us for the average is like $75 an hour. 25 to 100. 75 yeah. to 100. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, and they do it with such an amazing heart. Uh, they love Jesus. They yep. love the ministry. They love this place. So, you know, I don't just got um, homeless people to boss around. What I got are people have stepped up and, and have the same issues as, as most of our residents, but they've added to their issues. They've added to their plates, but through the service, it's, it's changed them. It's moved them. And, we're, and our selection process is based on how do we select our staff? They might want to hear that. So um, as tempting as it might be sometimes to take that new resident who's super friendly and, and all this stuff and put them on staff, uh, that has often backfired. Yep. Um, so basically what we do is I, I, I observe someone for a while, and I mean a while. We watch their character. We watch how they handle things when they get upset. Uh, we watch how they interact with one another. We try to see where their skill sets are at, what, what they can bring to the table, because I want to put them in a place that they can put those skill sets to and be successful use And be successful. Yeah. Um, and, and they struggle too. Like, you know, uh, Ken, Ken will come and he'll have a... a bad day or, or whatever and he'll need some a couple of days off and but that's being human right we all need that um Amen. but yeah and then we'll pray about it and then you know my assistant director rick and i will talk and we'll, we'll say hey let's give this guy a shot sometimes it backfires which is small it's, that's rare now now that we have the system in place yeah because mostly we know the, the people you're asked to do something you've got a pretty good idea of what they're like what they're like them. right what they can handle but uh these folks right here um, without them, I don't know what, I, I honestly don't know how I'd handle the shelter. Yeah, yeah. staff, I mean, every place needs staff. Mm -hmm. I, our thing is, how do you develop a staff with no salary? We can't go up to somebody and go, we can give you X number of dollars for doing X number of work. We, we simply say, mm -hmm. we got this, would you want to help out? Yeah. And that's how we got a staff. I mean, yeah. they and, just and say, the, I'll take it over. The and, best we can offer them is privileges we don't offer our normal residents. Right. Uh, some of the privileges are? Uh, staying out later. There you go. Um, not having to sign out if you need a day off. Yep. Um, you know, and, and really, we look out for each other quite a bit, and we'll counsel each other and talk to each other and say, hey, how you doing? Because yep. a uh, staff member is stressed, and it's they're doing it out of their heart rather than out of their wallet. So, yeah. So what... We have rules and regulations for residents. The staff tries to set an example of that, but like we, we do have curfews for the residents, which we have to have. But we, the staff is treated more like high in help, even though they don't get paid, they're still like high in help. And uh, so they are not listed as a resident, they are listed as staff, which separates them from the others. It allows them to do some of the things that the others aren't allowed to do. Uh, so. But for those little bit of privileges, these guys work their tails off. Uh, they've earned their privileges and then some. Uh, again, we could not do what we do. We could not accomplish what we accomplish without a staff that is willing to work just for some fringes. 
uh, because we cannot afford to hire staff. We're not on faith based. So the only ones that are compensated are myself and, and Seth, who is the uh, chief of staff. We're both compensated, and uh, for which we're very grateful. Uh, but our staff, other than that, there is no no financial compensations whatsoever. It is just you know, extras. So I, I want to go on record saying thank you to every one of you guys that serve here taking care of the homeless. You're welcome. Uh, you guys are what it's all about. You guys make it make this place operate. Uh, we could not we couldn't make sure that people had clean clothes, that their bathrooms were clean. Uh, none of this stuff, the food on the table. I mean, otherwise I'd be throwing a loaf of bread and some bologna at them because that's what I would be doing. I'm not cooking a five course meal. Been tempted. Been, been tempted. <laughs> well, we've done it once or twice. But, you know, you guys bring such skills and gifts to it and with the right attitude and we appreciate it. I want to thank you guys out there that are supporting us. That $9 gets these homeless off the street these guys extend you nine dollars because it's not used on them for salary. They do the job willingly, so they're expanding it. With you get way more bang for your buck that way. It's not going into uh, people outside of the homeless. It's going into the homeless. And a lot of organizations, ten cents gets to the, the homeless, and ninety percent goes to the ninety cents goes to staff and committees and all of that. Uh, that's not the way it is here. So when you give nine dollars. Believe me, it goes to the ministry. And so thank you for watching. We'll continue doing these things. Uh, we want to continue showing different things, not only here, but other ministries now. If you'd like to have me come and speak at your church or organization, contact the office at 207-474-8833 and say, I would like to have Pastor Barry come to my place. And then they'll, have, they'll get in touch with me and I'll get in touch with you. Uh, we love doing that. The other thing, if you got a ministry you know one um, that would like to be on our podcast uh, let us know that as well and we have podcasts we'll travel today we're in my office but we are out on the road a lot you you've seen a lot of these different backgrounds different areas we're going to go to christian camps this summer uh we're, we're going to be showing um, food pantry ministries all kinds of different stuff and we would like to do that in your area with your people showing what you're doing for the hurting for Jesus Christ too. But until then, you all come back now here. Yeah?